What up, much lots of people? Welcome to the best channel of all YouTube, so to speak. No, joking. I know I haven't been here for uh, quite a, some time because I was pretty busy with university. Uh, because some of you know, I'm studying sports science at the University of uh, Bern here in beautiful Switzerland. And I'm also an athletic coach uh, in the National Performance Center for Kickboxing. We're partnered with Swiss Olympics, so we are like the go to station for the people that want to really take on combat sports to the next level we have mixed martial arts uh, brazilian jiu-jitsu and kickboxing and i'm just a kickboxing practitioner but i work as a strength and conditioning and athletic coach there and that's why i had a little bit of ongoing stress in my life but today we're back so one of you um mentioned that we should watch um gordon ryan because he's one of like the greatest martial artists of our time just by looking at what he has achieved right and i know there's also some dudes in my gym that like impersonate gordon ryan just by the looks of them and not by coincidence they're also doing bjj so why not react to what gordon ryan's life has been so far here we have vote sport i would say we go for vote sport there's another one it's quite short 17 minutes we go for the longer one at 20 uh 23 at 22 minutes and also shout out to all the members on the channel it's just three of you but i really appreciate your support guys because you are making this whole thing possible here and you know when you know me then you know that i'm not doing just like give me your money and you don't get anything back right because we also have in the tiers when you become a member some special things that you can receive and level up your own training right okay let's go Gordon Ryan was born in from the start Gordon! five world championship gold medals 54 victories in a much, right? and a record-breaking submission rate subtitles I'm a high protein snack here Gordon Ryan Feature stuff good but... total dominance in the science of limb rearranging <laughs> He looks so cool with his white beard. I know he's dying it, but I, the dude is like almost my age. He's one one year older than me. What he has achieved is like four bots. It's a crazy damn. His eye-catching excellence on the mat took professional grappling to a level never seen before. Immediately gets the tap! 11 seconds! It's time to take a closer look at how the Iron Dragon came to be known as the King and the best jiu-jitsu practitioner on the planet. Like an anaconda, and he gets the submission, Gordon Ryan! I really look forward to sparring uh, today. In 1995 in Monroe, <laughs> it just makes me hyped up, right? At the age of 15, the lanky teenager put on his first gi and soon became friends with Gary Tonin, a promising brown belt who took the newcomer under his wing. Having decided to dedicate his life to jiu-jitsu, the, oh, the future match, nice. Ryan left his job as a garbage man and focused entirely on his athletic career. He joined the Henzo Gracie Academy in New York, where a team of promising talents gathered in a small basement under the leadership of John Danaher, a PhD in philosophy and a martial arts fanatic. Better I've seen the dude before, but I don't know where. St. Pierre's coach. John's intention was to revolutionize the world of no-gi grappling with his innovative system of leg locks. Ryan was among the first to join the infamous Danaher Death Squad, a group of students who implemented the mentor's ambitious plans on the mats. After making a splash in the color belts and getting a good start as a black belt, in 2016, Ryan captured the public's attention for the first time at Eddie Bravo Invitational 4. Even at that early stage, his proclivity for using inside foot position... Early stage, I mean, he's already a black belt. I mean, his can take people years and years and years of training training and they might not even achieve it yes he has left his job he doesn't have anything going on on this side so he doesn't have to work eight to five probably doesn't have a family at this age so yes when you train twice a day probably what he does um then yes you can achieve a black belt much shorter and also develop your skill for sure but 
Still, it's so amazing to see, man. Was evident. So it does make a difference, that wear and tear. Ryan's leg pummeling when passing the guard is also worth noting. Nice little pass there. When the foe yeah. stops a leg entry, it's worth noting. Nice little pass there. There. Awesome. There. When the foe stuffs a leg entry, Gordon immediately gets the underhook and removes the wizard. He's gonna go for an inverted triangle. Gets the back, but uh, blocks the defending arm. Ended up riding that and secures the rear naked choke. Gordon Ryan trying to finish yeah, it. Jason yeah. Flynn is done. Another constant feature of his game to this day: the shoulder crunch sumi geishi, aka the butterfly sweep. Nice. And really, I'm so sorry. I'm not that familiar with grappling. I'm more familiar with strength training. When a heel hook attempt fails, but it's really, I really want to mention. A lot of people have told me, "Hey, man, you should come and see it. Let's roll with us. Have a look at it." And I really, I really want to join and some sessions <laughs> grappling, but I don't. I cannot even like properly do kickboxing for my like levels. I'm not like complete beginner. I have like five to six years now of martial arts experience in different martial arts uh, styles, so to speak, only striking. So it would be completely new for me to grappling art, but I think like man, some someday I need to I need to get a touch on this because I cannot defend if I cannot defend myself on the ground, man. It's like there's something missing, bro. You know. <laughs> Ryan immediately switches to a knee bar. Good position. Yeah. Gordon's got that yep. knee bar. Opens the opponent's figure four lock. No, he's in the position. He's in the position he wants. And forces the tap. Oop, there's a knee bar. There it is. Knee bar upcoming here. Oh, got it. There it is. Gordon Ryan. Gordon's nice. defensive skills came into play in the semis against former world champion Yuri Simoesh. Despite a painful. Oh shit! Oh cut, shit! He never lost Ryan. composure. Some pain, he's grimacing, but Frida's hit. How does he get out of this? Danger. Oh. Once he had Yuri's back, Ryan neutralized one of the opponent's arms right away. There you go. And made the vet surrender. This choke for a long time. Oh, trick your taps! Wow! The Russian bear Rustam Chesiev managed to fend off the prospect's attacks in regular. From a strength training perspective or from an athletic development perspective, I wonder what flexibility or better to say mobility can do to the sport of jiu-jitsu because all the locks just work because your joints cannot move in a certain direction anymore right it's the end range so to speak and if you can increase that for example with functional range conditioning with uh, cars with um, specialized strength training to make your tendons and ligaments move out of their comfort zone and increase that range of motion for example, at the hips or at the shoulder, I think you are going to be also goddamn good because you are not tapped or some, uh, get into a submission that easily. I know there is a girl about the same age as I have, 26 now, and she's hyper flexible just by birth somehow. And she gets into splits, she can move like the hip internal rotation that is so painful for a lot of us because it's just a way that is limited by the functioning how the hip works she gets into those end ranges so easily and it's so crazy for me sometimes so see i think i should I, I need to ask her i need to ask her how that is with her hyper flexibility in in specifically jiu-jitsu i mean in striking arts kickboxing boxing muay thai it's not that of an advantage i mean it's basically zero advantage but here i can see that work bro it's a big <laughs> See that work, but it takes a lot of time. You ankle lock at the last second. Oh, Russ, I'm trying to get it done here in regulation and managed to shake Gordon off his back in overtime. Oh, did you see this position? I mean, Gordon is full, is full on his back here. And now you tell me, you tell me, <laughs> it's always the thing looking at it from a strength training perspective now. Don't round your back when you do uh, deadlifts, for example. Don't round your back. When you train a martial art and have strength training as like a substitute for it, we need to adapt. We need to adapt the things. That's why I would always encourage a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner or a wrestling practitioner to do something like Jefferson Curls. So where you have like, not crazy loaded, but a little bit loaded, we start progressively. Um, 
to do a deadlift on an elevated surface, so to speak, but you start from the top position, you round your back, you start by the head, and then you move down the spine, vertebrae by vertebrae, rounding it, rounding it under load. And then when you are stretched at the bottom position, you start to round back up. And it's what I tell my it's what I tell my athletes that are in my class, right? If you look at just the health, the health part of uh, part of it, yes, your spine is stronger in a neutral position, so in a slight S curve. That's how it's developed by nature and how we like function. But when you train strength training for a completely different purpose for the sport of jiu-jitsu here, we need to adapt because people that are doing jiu-jitsu are more likely or 100% more likely to be in such a position like you see here, right? I mean, this here, when he wants to stand up, that's around the back as hell. He has the most leverage because the weight is here on the top side of the back, on the head. He, that's crazy um, stress on the spine, on the downside spine, because you have like this here, your vertebrae is moving in this direction, like here, and here you have the most tension, you have force spikes, exactly here. That's why it can make sense to have like rounded backs when doing exercises or also circuit, um, circuit movements like circuit squats, circuit carries with the barbell are something I would highly, highly encourage martial artists that do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or um, also some other grappling arts like this here to do because it makes a huge transfer to it. Not for people that are into the health aspect so you don't have like it's it's with fitness it's so interesting because you don't have 99 percent of the time you don't have a correct answer you just have different contexts and you, as a coach you need to understand the context and give the athlete then the right amount of training the right techniques to succeed what they want if somebody wants to be just healthy i probably wouldn't give them a lot of like circle movements but for a submission grab, for a, for a wrestler, I most definitely would because their grip strength matters. For a dude that just comes in two to three times a week and wants to have a solid strength training program, he wants to sweat a little bit, wants to look better naked because 99% that's what the people want. They want to look better naked. Then you need to have another focus for training, right? And that's what also you should have another focus for training because all of you, I know you are different. You are different and you have a complete different like approach to what you want. If you're a martial artist, it's just not even a martial artist. It you need to look what style you do if you're doing more a striking art or a grappling art. That's a difference. You cannot do the same kind of strength training program, right? That's basically uh, that's basically also why I just have a complete basic strength training program that is cheap. Because it's if you want to have like a good strength training program for your respective goals, you need to see a professional like me. You need to have a personal training, a personal approach because everybody's on a different level. And if you take it seriously, then you do this. If not, then probably you're not going to get the results that you are or you could get. Right. That's also why I don't sell like $200 of programs of fitness programs because it doesn't make any sense. You can have like the base program if you don't know nothing at all right yes then you can buy the shit that's in the, my in my store that's just giving you like the baseline a solid baseline six months one year and then you need to go on and move on and see somebody professional somebody maybe a friend of you you can look by my channel just write me on instagram martial arts working hey i have this and this problem this and this is my art what can i do i'm happy to help you no worries but right that's the reason enough talking Sorry. Trying to crown a champion at EBI 6, the absolutes. The young prodigy readjusted. Love to talk about the shit. The second try. Oh, it's in. Oh, it's in. Oh, oh yes. Nice. Oh, wow. Gordon Ryan with a very important tap out. And escaped an arm bar to come out victorious. Oh, oh. oh. oh can you get nice. Screws out. It is Doc Gordon Ryan. It's the EBI absolute champion. Ryan closed his first year at Black Belt with a match against Felipe Pena. Nicknamed Peguisa, or Sloth, for being sluggish as a kid, the Brazilian developed into a formidable technician who would submit big names like Lucas Barbosa. 
And Marcus Buchecha. Oh, Ryan didn't waste time and launched an attack right away. Right into inside Sankaku, cross your hook. He's in, it on, he's in on this. Philippe doing the right thing. But the adversary cleared the knee line and settled an X guard. The walls, they're going to keep going. The referee's not going to stop him. Felipe's balance allowed him to block sweeps. He's got a nice grip on that arm now. He can use that for straight arm bar, more likely. And shut down leg entanglements. Countered, but then nice. Gordon would find keys to the Brazilian's defense. Extend the leg, there it is. But his favorite inside Ashigarami setup spelled more trouble. On the leg here, he's got the he's inside deep. Senkaku. He's real deep in there. But now, a nice transition oh. by Philippe. He tried again. Threat of overtime. And why did they say that Ryan's deep again. on the leg here? Again, the inside Senkaku. Philippe slides out nicely. And again. There we go. However, the stubbornness eventually came to bite him. Good shape. Pena grabbed onto Ryan's wide open yeah. back. Looking transfer to the back. Closed the body triangle. And he's locked the body triangle. And snatched the victory at the 43 minute mark. Yeah. 43 the minutes. Are you stupid, bro? Then. 43 minutes. The still cardboard king went on a conquest for the real throne. Abu Dhabi Combat Club, or ADCC for short, is the Olympics of submission grappling, where the most dangerous limb collectors in the world gather once every two years. I think one of our, we are four strength training coaches, and one of them, uh, Flo, Flo Grappling on Instagram, is also, I think, he's Europe champ, if I'm not mistaken, and he was also at the ADCC once. And he's also an athletic coach. I just had an idea. Do you guys want to see like me and Flo train and do a little vlog? I would do like something uh, specialized strength training just for BJJ. That would look completely different that I would do for my athletic development and my kickboxing like development, right? So drop me, drop me a like here or just mention it in the comments if you would like to see this because I, I need to ask Flo if he got time for this because he's also now it's season for him so. He's going on competitions quite regularly. But maybe we could find a date where I could record such a video. That would be quite cool, honestly. I could, I could learn also a lot. Gordon a one-dimensional footsie player and questioned his chances in a rule set that incentivizes takedowns and top control. Entering the 88 kilogram division, Ryan faced Dylan Dennis in the Dagestan. opening round. <laughs> Nowadays, Dennis is mostly known for his friendship with Conor McGregor and his bizarre behavior both in person and on social media. But in 2017, he was still considered a talented athlete with a world championship gold medal at Brown Belt. Despite a promising start, and aside from a couple of catching exchanges, the match was not dynamic and ended with a decision in favor of Gordon. Moving up the bracket, Dana Her's protege went against a legend of the sport, Homolo Bajal. The Brazilian had been competing at the highest level for over 10 years, winning ADCC gold four years prior. But the experience gap was not a factor. Ryan shot a single, ran the pipe, slipped around the guard, took the back, and beheaded the adversary in cold blood. The baton was picked up by another gentle art hegemon and two-time ADCC champion, Shandi Hibero. Gordon arm dragged really him to prove right himself. away. Looked to establish back mount using a Kimura. and threatened the rival's legs to no avail. Who was Kimura? I know it, it was an influential figure in martial no arts, and I know it's the move is like named after him, but I don't know who he was. The only obstacle Do you know? separating Gordon from the throne was his old acquaintance, Keenan Cornelius. Gordon Ryan loves Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> it's his real attack. Clear, while Andre Galvao tried to warn his student. Avoid that, Keenan. Avoid that. Avoid that. Always okay. avoid that. Cornelius recklessly changed levels and ended up on the scaffold. Once a tight grip was secured, Ryan rolled back to mount. 
Nice. That was beautiful. And quickly forced the tap. Jack Cornelius tapped. Gordon Ryan. Long live the king. The ADCC World Championship. Addicted to success, Gordon showed up in the absolute division. In the first match, he dealt with Roberto Abreu with shocking ease. Just 90 seconds in, the formidable Cyborg fell into a familiar trap and chose not to bite off his own leg. The previously mentioned Craig Jones was the next victim. The contest between two new... That's one thing that I find so annoying, and maybe some of you are going to hate me for this, but... The previously mentioned Craig Jones was the next victim. Stand the directly to the ground. I don't know, it's just strange for me. It's just somehow strange. Two new wave knee rippers was settled with old school jujitsu. I have to get my head around this a little bit more, I think. Then pass to mount. And apply the trustworthy arm triangle. The semi-final opponent, Muhammad Ali from Brazil, did not learn from the mistakes of his colleagues. Quite a bold and statement, their right? Unenviable fate. And just like that, the long-awaited rematch against Felipe Pena was upon us. Preguisa had suffered an unfortunate loss in the 99 kilo finale, entered the absolute, and strangled the great Bucheche himself in the semis. After 10 minutes of butting in a standing position, Gordon eventually secured a single leg takedown. However, bypassing the Brazilian's defense turned out to be a non-trivial task. We're in Greece now. Felipe slowed down the enemy's offense with 50-50 guard. The 50-50 guard is on leg focused. Guard that aims to lock the opponent in a neutral space. And the bear hmm. trap. Looks like he's got him in the bear trap. Bear trap. Okay. Which arm is what? <laughs> okay, here. Arm, arm. Securing the left leg. With his right leg. He's securing his right leg. And this is balance. Okay. And when got the it. frustrated Ryan pulled the ace out of his sleeve. Inside Ooh, he got it. Lightning struck the same place a second time. Look, he's gonna... Opa. Pena took his back. Opa. <laughs> exactly it. Closed the body triangle. Amazing attack. And smiled until the very end. Two, one, Felipe Pena. Although beat again by his arch nemesis, the American made a splash with his first appearance on the main stage. One gold and one silver medal went to New Jersey. Oh man, it's a bad day for the haters today. <laughs> Shortly after the triumphant coronation with a bitter taste, Gordon returned to Eddie Bravo Invitational as a dominant force. After ending 2017 on a high note against Yuri Simoesh, it's freezing and he gets the top with 18 seconds left. The following May, Ryan stumbled against Jiu Jitsu and MMA veteran Vinny Magalesh. Known for his Mr. Fantastic level plasticity. No. He openly laughed to see it helps. to break his legs and came out of strategically important exchanges on top. Eventually winning by points. The loss lit a fire under Gordon. He unleashed his fury at the Pan American Championships, taking the gold in the 97 kilo division and the absolute. Poor Max Jimenez had to tap to a rear naked choke twice in a span of hours. The only one to offer some resistance was Andre Galvao's student, Kainan Duarte. The talented Brazilian threatened a guillotine. It's crazy there are like zero people in there watching this, right? And took a shot with a toehold, but achieved nothing in the end. Once on top in the guard, although it seems to be quite an important tournament for the BJJ. Elegant move. The finishing touch was just a matter of time. Not long after, Gordon stepped in as a late replacement to participate in Quintet, a team event organized by Kazushi Sakuraba. According to the format, the winner stays on the mat to grapple the next member of the opposing team. 
Oh, wait, what? <laughs> the case of a draw, both athletes leave the mat and their comrades replace them. Barnett, round number one. In the very first match, That's the quite game cool. almost caused an earthquake by sweeping former UFC heavyweight champion Josh Barnett. Josh Barnett the second heaviest. Eloquently slid into side control and mounted the giant. Uh, people like to use sometimes to just... The explosive escape attempt only made things worse. Oh, Gordon Ryan setting up a triangle show. This could be... This is, this is deep to stand up. If he doesn't hook the ring... See the spine? Marco Souza gave up the back without much resistance. No, is he doing now all five by himself? Following a short break after drawing against Ryzen champion Roberto Satoshi, Gordon squared off against Craig Jones once again. The Australian fired the first shot. Pivotal bout. Jones immediately going for the guillotine. Target lost. Pulling his head free. Gordon reciprocated. Roll all the way through. There we go. Roll through to take the back. Target destroyed. An incredible distraction. There's the tap. And the win for Gordon Ryan. And finally, the king took Vitor Hibero's arm as a trophy. These are the fighters Ooh, both in the four spot. An here is in a great position to finish this arm. Extending the arm. Even though he doesn't have the money, this is a good finish. Hibero taps in the win for Gordon Ryan. The dominance on this night continues. Ironically, there were still people who doubted Ryan's ability to win in a traditional rule set, with a point system and without heel hooks. In order to refute those talks, the American participated in the IBJJF World Championship. The result is predictable. Two more gold medals and a couple of funny moments to remember. Walmart knockoff Mark Hunt played a punching bag. Movement based. Remember, Walmart knockoff. I mean, that's to be the open <laughs> way to vision, but look at this foot stomp here. Mark Hunt Precise, brother. Bag. Movement based passing, pressure based passing, effortless back take. I mean, you also and look at his physique. Yeah. At the end. And here's Cyborg Abru in his preparation. I mean, the one of Gordon Ryan's. Power slap, resulting in a disqualification. <laughs> Buckle up, 2019 ADCC ahead. Gordon was far from his best shape entering the biggest event of the season. A debilitating stomach illness caused constant nausea, and shortly before the tournament, he suffered a broken Now we're talking with the stadium. As it may, he decided not to pull out at the last minute and went up to the 99 yeah, kg. Ben Hodgkinson was blown away with a tornado sweep. He's really good on his butterfly for his arm attacks. Got his back taken. Yeah, for sure he's using his fight to like, you know, get his... And tapped to a strangle. Face. You can see that little face right on the nose. It's over. That's the submission. Tim Spriggs lingered on the mat a bit longer. He's gonna go to the back now, he's gonna defend. Even Ryan. so, made it to the date with Morpheus nonetheless. He can't, he gets the tap. Gordon Ryan submits Tim Spriggs. Otto's representative, Lucas Barbosa, with a self-explanatory nickname Hulk, preferred a pushing contest on the feet and would not engage on the ground. He came to life only in overtime. Nice rear trip there. But got nothing for it since he couldn't hold the king down for long enough. Hulk tries to lift, does so, returns Gordon to the... The noticeably fresher king down... It's also an interesting moment. You see this? Nice. Looks quite there, yeah. I know, but looking at it from a strength training perspective. Is that optimal positioning? No, but it's what the sport is. So this kind of movements, like this heavy throwing movements where round your back <clears throat> can also be something beneficial. You can do this with punching backs or with heavy backs or with um, moderate to heavy med uh, medicine balls. Because when you can train like with 20 kilo medicine balls, yes, they are heavy, but I mean, Gordon Ryan, probably 70, 80 kilo, somewhere there is something else. For long enough. 
Specificity. Specificity of training is the so important guys so important posture and inserted the hooks to get three points watch the neck now you gotta watch the neck if you're hulk however he ran out of time to seal the deal experience there of gordon got him through gordon's performance in the final against vinicius ferreira was textbook Effortless knee tap takedown. Again, the knee tap again. Boom. Beautiful knee tap. Excruciating pressure from top position, leading to an easy guard pass. Yep, exactly. There's Gordon the mount again. Cold blooded back attack. Yes. But Gordon takes advantage of. Create asymmetry by trapping the opponent's arm. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. See, see, see. Here. Tap the other arm or control the other arm. Wow. Shit, bro, that sucks. <laughs> and proceed to ruthless oxygen deprivation. Yep, this is a big yeah, tap. Vinicius for God, I'm going to do in this situation, bro. In all its deadly glory. It is. But the king would not be on the throne if he was afraid of challenges. The openweight conquest began with an outside heel hook against Pedro Marino. What do you think? How many calories does he spend a day doing this, doing competition? The against Gary Tonin was a difficult challenge mentally. It's hard to perform against teammates, let alone a mentor. Sure, but also by Besik is going to be needing something between five, five, six thousand calories to maintain. And was revered for his aggressive, submission oriented style. I mean, did you hear like 40 minutes, something? I mean, it's just, just 10 minutes and five times. It's crazy. He's no stranger to scrapping with bigger guys either. We are underway. Knowing each other's styles like the back of their hands, the brothers in arms went at it right away. New Jersey. Ryan countered a backstep attempt. Every time we'd see him, and then, you know, Gordon, the protege of Gary and Tom. Put the hooks in and advanced to the semis. Squeezing with that single arm and gets the submission. One step away from the final, Gordon crossed paths with Lachlan Giles. The Australian ACL menace created a sensation, disfiguring the knees of giants like Kynan Duarte and Patrick Gaudio. Lachlan Giles! However, Dan Hur's top students are immune to such tricks. He's gotta have some slick defense. When the opportunity came, Ryan went on the offensive, mounted the rival, the back, the there back it is. Day, yes. And completed the task at hand. Now he's going straight for a face smash. He got it. Gordon Ryan gets the submission. So I'm also a little Only bit, one... a little bit like not anxious, but I have a lot of respect for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because, as what I see in our gym, people are more injured than the kickboxers. If a kickboxer is injured, it's most of the time nothing severe. Right, it's some bruises maybe and some colored skin so to speak your ankle may be hurt because you've thrown a kick a little bit sloppy or whatever muscles hurt a little bit because you catch the kick or whatever yes but it's not something on the joints that is like ma a major problem major health problem that you need to see a doctor so the hurdle separated gordon from the coveted throne of the absolute division the hurdle's name was Marcus Almeida, one of the best jiu-jitsu practitioners of all time. A physical specimen with cat-like dexterity, Uchecha promised to be the toughest test of Ryan's career. As it is often the case... Nice! See the logo? Ruka! Here. Balance of opposites. Uh, that's not the back pin, but it's it's the same. It's also the sponsor of our Earth facility. Often the case when two geniuses collide, their skills neutralized each other. Ryan was a bit more aggressive. Nice sweep from here. There it goes. There it is. Love the close from Ruka, by the way. And more sound. Gym close, workout close. So awesome. <laughs> no sponsoring. Point for passivity became decisive. The open weight gold that had treacherously slipped out of his hands two years prior now belonged to Ryan. Only one peak remained unconquered. A super fight with the big bad wolf, Andre Galvao. Wow, what a monster. In order to diversify the That's diet, what I want to see a martial arts physique like. had to offer, Gordon took on a series of matches against big names in <coughs> other combat sports. 
The first in this fun run was the infamous UFC veteran and a traumatologist's best friend, Rusamar Palhares. He rolls out to Kimura. This is it. It's it. It's all over. Try and time the opponent's attempts to pull deep half guard. And easily took the back in the first minute. He's not looking for that foot immediately, but he gives his back. Only to spend the remaining 14 searching for the neck from a dominant position. Not be able to defend. But apparently, Rusamar's head was attached directly to his chest, so Gordon had to be content with a decision win. In December 2019, the challenge was accepted by Bo Nickel, a star of American collegiate wrestling who's now a hot prospect in the ultimate promotion. Competing in traditional takedowns was a plan designed to fail, so Ryan resorted to Kani Basami, aka the scissor takedown. He's using to get him down. But However, Nickel managed to slip away. In the end, he said screw it and took the bait. To the cage. Yeah. Big takedown there from Bo Nickel. Little did he know that it was poisoned. Exactly right. Uh, triangle. There's the triangle there. It's going to be over. Well, I think it's going to be over. He's trying to slam. Oh, we got it. See wrestling. Well, that's <laughs> Different, <awesome>. brother. <laughs> Just five days later, Gordon returned to Quintet for a showdown against the boa constrictor that's exactly from the what UFC, that meant. Alexei Alenik. It went down exactly how you might expect. I'm glad we saw this. It is over. All hail the king, Gordon Ryan. The match against another king. UFC vet, Gabriel Gonzaga, followed a similar script. Leg lock now, Gordon's Gordon got Ryan. that leg lock in. The turn, there's the tap, and there's oh the win. God. After having a squabble on social media with another collegiate wrestling standout, Pat Downey, Gordon agreed to have two matches, a wrestling one and another with a grappling rules set. As expected, Downey dominated in his element. Gonna put him out of bounds. He's like, Cho immediately shucks by, gets to his back. Man, wrestling is so crazy, really. I, I'm I'm so ashamed. A lot of a lot of years I thought wrestling is the thing that the clowns do, <laughs> like the WWE. That is wrestling. It's it it needed to be like I needed to be in my early twenties to realize that wrestling is also like one of the most effective martial arts out there ever. <laughs> Two for that. That'll be nine. He rolls through again. And one by it's basically throwing around people, right? <laughs> but once submissions came into play, he was completely out of his depth. In heavy three quarter here. He'll get a second hook in. And tapped to pressure on his neck. He'll look to put Downey back to the mat again. Crazy strong look. Tap is uh, get the tap oh, back. see his ankle. Down. Here. Downey back to the mat again. Oh, brother. Oh, that must have hurt. Shit. Tap. He's going to get the tap here on the three. Ryan was confused as to what even happened. It's a power half Nelson. That wasn't a submission. I didn't choke him. During the pandemic, Gordon never stopped honing his skills despite the obstacles. That perseverance paid dividends. As soon as Flow Grappling Promotion resumed its activity, the New Jersey native returned with a streak of triumphs over highly ranked opponents. Arms got snapped. Dangerous pressure on the shoulder. There it is. There's the finish. Losing the position. That's extended. That's very much arm reverse. Uh, oh, bro. Arm is locked out. And here it is. The finish. And knees got popped. Heel hook. Heel hook. Simple dominance was not enough, and the king came up with a new idea. Entering the stage against Wagner Hosha, Gordon was holding an envelope in his hands, gave it to the commentators, and said, open it after the match. While everyone was perplexed by this ploy, the arrogant innovator was taking his sweet time torturing his counterpart. Good move. Good move. The resilient Wagner talked smack back. But cockiness and toughness are no help against a reverse triangle. The secret of the envelope was revealed in the post-match interview. A worthy application for the psychic challenge. Triangle with the words, who's next? On May 2021, <laughs> Gordon shocked the community, announcing his retirement from competition. The stomach illness that had plagued him for a long time became incompatible with the normal training process. So I had recurring staph infections in 2018. Uh, I was taking oral antibiotics and it just wiped out 
everything in my stomach, but it ended up being a massive fungal overgrowth in my small intestine and uh, a huge bacterial imbalance and then H. pylori, which I had. Partially, I like, took a leave of absence. I guess I like retired from grappling for a year because I couldn't even like function as a human being, never mind, like I couldn't even like hold the conversation. I was so nauseous all the time. The treatment and subsequent return took almost a year. The impudent prospect Jacob Couch volunteered to spoil the King's party. Hardly a successful venture in retrospect. Following 13 minutes of pain and humiliation. There he is, Gort seems to have got what he wants here now, isolated. Couch tapped to unbearable top pressure and exhaustion. Going high, gets the finish there. This time the envelope contained a message instead of a I know you're watching and I don't bother leaving there. Prediction. It's gonna be interesting. In July of 2021, the news broke out that the Danaher death squad had split up. The members did not elaborate on specific reasons, which gave rise to rumors. Gordon and Geary remained faithful to their mentor. However, Craig Jones and Nick Rodriguez, who had joined the team later, opened their own gym and turned from comrades into rivals. Come August 2022, Gordon and Penna clashed again, this time in a submission-only, no-time-limit match. On the day of the grand event, the no public time found limits, out are from you the fucking tragic death stupid. of Leandro Lowe. The loss of a close friend was a huge blow to Felipe. He asked the promotion to postpone the event, but they refused. Submission only. The Given the circumstances, Penna couldn't perform to the best of his abilities. Ryan beautifully countered his passing attempts. Nice. Nice. For the Brazilian's back. Look at the craftiness of Felipe, able to invert and had more success in the wrestling department. Big snap right to Felipe used his old tactics to halt the assault, but refused to continue at the 45 minute mark. Oh. Finally, on the third attempt, the king secured a victory against the rebel. Originally planned for 2021, due to the epidemiological situation, ADCC took place only in 2022. Being the reigning absolute champion, so Gordon this year was supposed to have a single match, the fight against Andre Galvao, the long conflict I mean, with whom had reached new levels. I wouldn't leave him alone with my girlfriend in a room. It looks damn sexy, not now, but before. <laughs> Nevertheless, to cement his place in history, I mean, Ryan persuaded the I mean, I mean come on to cement his come on come on <laughs> I'm straight I'm straight place in history Ryan persuaded the organizers to allow him to enter the heavyweight bracket as well the Finn Heike Jusula met his doom first the favorite quickly teleported behind his back put in both hooks Here comes the back control now isolated the victim's arms and strangled the helpless fella there it, is. there it is beautiful submission newly crowned no gi world champion victor hugo is the only one who was able to fend off submissions he switched to a triangle there for a sec oh but was a step behind in positional exchanges and lost eight to zero beautiful pass by Lord ryan the semi-final against Roosevelt Souza. No comment here. Under the leg. Oh, we're going straight for a heel, straight hook, for heel hook. Immediately gets the tap. 11 seconds for Gordon Ryan. Enter straight Ashigarami. Reap the leg and grab the heel. Twist and enjoy. Here. Wow. At the top of the bracket, Gordon was standing against former teammate Nick, the black belt slayer Rodriguez. All right, we are live from the. Despite countless hours of mat time with Gordon, Nick fell into the shark infested pool. Gordon already attacking the leg and inevitably drowned. And Gordon Ryan just submitted Nick Rodriguez. Everything was set for the long awaited showdown. Since winning absolute gold in 2011, Galvao had been defending his super fight champion title every two years and had never once stumbled so far. But on September 18th, he was in there with a completely different beast. What a physique! What a fine physique, man! Ah, beautiful to watch, man. Leg lock attempts very well. 
but Ryan changed tactics immediately. He pulled Galvao on top, grabbed his free leg, and used the leg entanglement to sweep instead. Much better, uses it to come up to the top of Turtle. Firmly establishing top position. Foot sweep, trying to get Galvao to his back. Ryan controlled Andre's head and slowly but surely deconstructed the enemy's redoubts. There he mounted now. Once in his favorite position, he used cross-side wrist control to trap the left arm. Sit here and go isolating the arm. Oh, he's got he's the arm isolated. Rendering the legend practically helpless, he slid the forearm under the chin and put an exclamation point on the rivalry. Like an anaconda, That's and he tap. gets the it. submission, Gordon Ryan. The last bastion fell, and the title of the world's best grappler was no longer in question. Facing the biggest challenge, the American wizard not only strangled the kingpin, but also ran over the big boy division like an asphalt paver. Three tournaments, six medals, five of them gold, an unprecedented result for a guy who but once gave up everything old. in pursuit of a dream. The king! Deserved, man, deserved. Gordon is that rare breed of athletes who transform their disciplines. Fully devoting himself to his craft, he reached incredible heights and became a role model. At the same time, his scandalous persona regularly generates headlines, drawing increased attention to submission grappling. By the age of 27, he had already conquered everything there is to win, built a 54-match unbeaten streak, and submitted 82% of his opponents along the way. And most importantly, he has not even reached his peak yet. Oh, Gordon oh, gets the hook. And here comes the back control now. Yep. There it is. And there it is. Yep. There it is. Nice beat. Oh. Oh. Nice. Oh. Oh. There it goes. There it is. Oh. Wow. Ah, oh, he got it. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more grappling sorcery on our channel, tap the like button and vote for sport. That was fantastic. Vote sport. Leaving the link down in the comments as well. Go also over to their channel. I mean, quite a little bit bigger than mine, but don't care. Such a great documentary. Such a great documentary. As always, leave a comment down below what you want to see me next. Because I got so good. It was so, it was so interesting. Man. It, it rose a little bit that fire to try really maybe in a couple of weeks i'm stepping on the mat on the jits mat and see what <laughs> looking myself folded in my clothes so to speak so go to training take care of yourself until the next time